This is Scott from DLXFusion.com, and I'll be sh going over WordFence's Word security plugin, going to how it functions, how things work, and showing you the basic setup process. I ran a scan, and I have this on a local machine. I use this for testing the uh, themes and design, but um, I ran a test, and I found one of the posts that I had imported from something. It, it says it was linked to a bad URL and it violated the Google Safe Browsing and if I click this link it will actually take me to the URL well if I have to select this link it will take me to the URL and Google will actually pop up and give me a warning as you can see so the plugin is a really good job because it's actually going through and scanning all the posts if you look through the activity log it's it analyzed a lot of stuff and it goes through and it checks basically everything it checks 187 URLs from 119 different sources. It checks quite a bit of stuff, and this is only this thing only has like 87 posts. It's got 8,000 files, 29 plugins, six themes, 99 pages, 47 comments, 551,176 records, and it did it in 118 seconds. Keep in mind that this is on a local machine, so the results are going to be incredibly skewed. Let's go into the live traffic. Live traffic allows it to monitor um, your the traffic that comes in. It tells you if there's any 404s, any type of this. It's really powerful for monitoring. Unfortunately, it's a huge resource drain. If you have a website that generates a lot of traffic, chances are is you will have a slowdown and your shared host will not appreciate this. I don't typically recommend WordFence for any shared hosting plan because it's a huge resource hog especially if your site gets quite a bit of uh, views you can try and get around this by caching but even then it just generates a lot of database queries but it has gotten better if you aren't a shared hosting you may want to turn this feature off by clicking this button right here and it would definitely save you some server resources the performance setup allows you to turn on the caching engine it's got it's kind of misleading there's the basic caching engine and then there's the Falcon engine and this is an incredibly basic caching system and it's not nearly as powerful as they make it seem. The plugin the, by 30 to 50 times they mean that you can serve 30 to 50 times more traffic in a period. For instance if you get sent 100 URLs in your server caches uh, crashes you have a crappy server for one, but this will actually make it to where you can have a lot more traffic because it's just serving a static file that's been compressed and is easier to handle. Um, it's definitely not better than W3 Total Cache, but it's very simple because you basically just turn this on and you go. Nothing to really configure. Um, typically though, on some sites, if you enable the Falcon Engine, you may have issues, things may break, so it's not always recommended if you can't get it to work on your site then turn it off. The blocked IPs function allows you to block a range of IPs from either logging in or accessing the site entirely or they were throttled because they were trying to access the site too many times. Again, this can slow things down. The password audit allows you to go through and check all your passwords. Um, at user level, less extensive against the dictionary, approximately 50,000 passwords on all WordPress accounts. Um, this right here is going to check all the passwords. The it'll check the administrator accounts and against a huge dictionary. The user level accounts are not as extensive because when they're users, you can you can change the password whatever you wish, and it's harder to get them to change or you could just audit all the WordPress accounts in general and see what comes up. Cell phone sign in is a premium feature of the plugin but it essentially allows you to set up a cell phone. Keep in mind that this is also pretty resource intensive. Country blocking allows you to block a, a range of IPs from a certain country. They have a huge list right here and it will block it. Um, Note that we use an IP2 country database that is 99.5% accurate, meaning that there's a point oh, there's a 0.5 chance that you are blocking someone out. As someone has an IP from a proxy that's in China and you block China, well, they're going to be blocked out. The
scan schedule allows you to choose how often or when WordPress should uh, WordFence should scan. You can do manually scheduled scans, um, or it'll automatically scan them. If you do the automatic, do the manual, then it's going to tell you that you should do a manual scan, and it will let you know. If you do the automatic, it'll do that. I don't recommend doing this feature too frequently as it can be incredibly resource intensive, especially if you have a lot of things such as BuddyPress or just a ton of posts and content for it to go through. Therefore, I mean, I, I only recommend you doing it is on the weekends would be a good one. Let's see. Saturday and Sunday, and I would actually turn off Sunday and only do it on Saturday. In fact, depending on when your site gets viewers, I would turn it to a time when they're not on because they can take a lot of memory and it's a long process depending on how much stuff's on your website. So I recommend going onto here and saying, when are you users going to be least likely on your website? Well, I don't want to be up at 1 a.m. on a sun Saturday morning. So actually, Saturday is when we're going to stay up all night. So no one's going to be up at 11. No one's going to be up at 1 a.m. on a Monday morning because they're going to have work. So we can just assume that that's at a target time, and then we can save it to schedule that scan. The Who Is lookup allows you to look up IP addresses and see the Who Is information, very basic. The advanced blocking allows you to do an IP address range, a user agent, a referral from a bad website. You Sometimes you'll get a lot of traffic from bad websites that are just referral spam. This is a great way to cut down on that. And the other thing is in your options menu, you have a lot of basic options. You're going to have a free API key, and you can upgrade to get new features. Um, there's not a whole lot of premium features, but when they are, they're pretty useful. When doing a scan, we're going to check with spam services if your website IP address is listed as a known source of spam mail. If it does, then you'll be able to work on it. If your website has been spambertized, then you can work on solving that. And advanced comment and spam filter. That can also be fixed. Um, enable the live traffic view. This option enables live traffic logging. This is huge and resource, hugely resource intensive, and I don't recommend running it. Enable the firewall. I recommend running. Um, enables all login security options. We'll scroll down to that. The automatic and scheduled scans. I just say regular scans. Um, you have the automatic scan 1 a.m. on a Monday morning when nobody's there and automatically update WordPress f I don't recommend running this typically if you're going to use a site you will update the plugins manually and there's plenty of other tools that will allow you to update it automatically so there's no real need for that the security level um, light protection it goes from level 0 to level 4 lockdown would be as if your site's having a DDoS attack I would pop this in that scenario you can also do custom settings, but we're not going to bother with that. We'll scroll down for more. So, how does the Word WordFence get IPs? You can do a couple things. You can use the Cloudflare HTTP header to get a visitor IP. That is good because if you're using Cloudflare, you should use this. And I wouldn't recommend this. Use PHP's built-in remote adder, very secure if the site is compatible. It's not always compatible. Only use if you have front-end proxying. This should not be used. Now, truly, if you're using Cloudflare, I wouldn't see the need of using WordFence at all. But if you are and you're using WordFence, then by all means, use the Cloudflare CF connecting IP. The advanced options, you can configure the alerts, the email summary, but we're more interested in this stuff down here. Scans to include. So these are what will be included in your scans. <clears throat> scan for malicious files. Scan plugin files against repository versions for changes. If your files have been changed before an update, then this can mean that something's gotten into the plugin and is modified to be malicious. This is a great way to check against that. Check this. Scan the theme files against repository versions for changes. It's again, it's the same thing. If you get your theme from the WordPress repository, it'll check it as something's been modified that isn't a good sign or has been modified that you, outside of your knowledge. Then this can be a sign of a uh, malware or a hacking attempt. Scan files outside of your WordPress installation. If you're on a local host, by all means, do not do this because I don't even know what's going to happen. Scan image files as if they were executable. This can. Whoop, we don't need that. 
this can be a useful tool, but again, it's going to add a lot more processing time. <coughs> Enable high sensitivity simply means that it's going to, it's going to be more sensitive. It's if it's find anything that looks odd or run or unchanged, it's going to say whoa, whoa, whoa. Even if it's something slight, like you change something minor, it could result in a false positive, like saying instead of he, it's he's, and some. It, it's a really crappy example, but it's just something simple for you to understand. And if you add it, it's more likely to give you a false positive. <clears throat> BDA block fake Google crawlers. I actually recommend that. But verified Google crawlers can have an unlimited time. If anyone's request exceed unlimited, basically if they're trying to do something absurd, like they're trying to do 32 requests per second, that would be a sign of potential threat and I would throttle it or block it. If 404 for unknown vulnerable URLs exceed this many, basically you can do a lot with the firewall rules. Again though, I prefer using something like Cloudflare where I can manage it at a higher level than this. Actually, force all members to use strong passwords should be the set. Everybody should have a strong password on your website, but chances are you're not going to have that, so only force the admins and publishers to use it so that we are not hindering your users. Um, hide the WordPress version. Um, you can enable this, but you may be blocking legitimate requests sometimes. And the rest of these settings are fine. Start all scans remotely. No, don't bother with these. And of course you can uh, export your settings. So Word Defense is a really nice plugin because it's got a lot of powerful features, but in the end, it can slow the website down, especially if you're on your shared hosting. If you're on a shared hosting, I recommend dropping Word Defense entirely because it's going to hinder your website load time and your host will go spar at you. They will be mad and you will get in trouble. So thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them below and I'll answer them. See you next time.